But I thank you uh, for holding this important briefing regarding such a dynamic and troubling situation in Turkey. I'm honored to be here alongside, of course, the experts, uh, and I really appreciate y'all being here. Uh, I've never been able to understand how Turkey, a country positioning itself for entry in the EU, can continue to deny citizens even basic human rights, such as the freedom of religion, the freedom of speech, and the freedom of expression. I'm especially concerned, of course, about the viability of the Eastern Orthodox Church. I'm uh, an Eastern Orthodox. Uh, Turkey, which shut down the Orthodox Seminary in Halki, has refused to reopen the seminary over 40 years now. I believe it was shut down in 1971. Uh, as elders in the Orthodox Church age, this policy could extinguish the nearly 2,000-year-old church that over a quarter of a billion faithful belong to, again, all over the world. I think we have uh, close to three, uh, three, mi three million, uh, maybe three to five million Orthodox Christians uh, here in the United States. <clears throat> Additionally, by keeping tens of thousands of troops in Cyprus, Turkey continues to display hostility to the rule of law and international norms. I'm interested to know from you, the panelists, uh, how our country, the beacon of liberty for justice and good throughout the world, does not use its unmatched influence to prod Turkey into acting like a secular democracy instead of a third world totalitarian state. I'm greatly troubled by various news reports out of Turkey uh, that the Prime Minister Erdogan intends to convert Hagia Sophia, the Basilica, and, and uh, of course a, a beautiful symbol of Orthodox Christianity to a mosque. I personally will do everything in my power as a United States uh, congressman to prevent that from happening. Uh, the remarkable church was built, as you know, as a testament uh, to the Christian faith. Erdogan's comments, if true, show cultural bankruptcy that is extremely disturbing to me. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but just like you and all civil-minded folks, the recent intolerance from certain members of the Turkish government is alarming to me and it is jeopardizing the positive democratic reforms, in my opinion, the country has made in the past decade. Anti-Semitism, uh, anti-Semitic remarks will not be tolerated. The imposition of internet restrictions like banning uh, Twitter, and I just found out about YouTube, it's, it's, they're such a valuable communication resource worldwide, uh, is a direct threat to the right of peaceably, uh, peacefully assembling, of course, uh, and speaking your mind, which is so very important in that region, uh, which, and of course, is, that's the root of modern democracy. These rights are never more valuable than during the run-up to uh, democratic elections and the actions taken by the Turkish government against those peaceably, peacefully assembling will speak louder than any statement made or press release issued. The United States' relationship with all of its allies, Turkey included, must be based on shared values and mutual respect. And at the core, the rule of law must be respected by all. Lastly, it is the national interest, it is in the national interest of both the United States and Turkey to continue to keep a close watch on Iran's illicit nuclear program. Relations between Iran and Turkish banks in the last decade point to a troubling entanglement of, uh, of funds that could ultimately support terrorism. My hope is that the entanglement is a thing of the past as any assistance to subservient uh, Iranian or Syrian groups would completely undermine U.S. national security interests and pose a serious danger to the allies worldwide, Turkey included. An ally of the United States must respect democratic values and cherish an opportunity like this one today to dig deep and examine a troubling situation with uh, experts in the field. And so I'm interested to hear your thoughts on these questions and many others from my colleagues.